the next uh, speaker is uh, uh, Professor Miani Fabio from University of Udini. Uh, his topic is mechan uh, chemistry. Yes, taking my book. Okay, and also the. So I need also this device. Yeah. So this is a laser. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, and this forward. is for moving. Yeah. yeah. Hope it works. Otherwise, it will. So. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and uh, not only excited because I'm hosted by Professor Badesha, but I also may, must thank all the staff. So when I sent emails around 10 o'clock in the evening, I had an answer in three hours, basically in the night. So it was fantastic. There is a lot of young guys that's working here. And I suggest that everybody appreciate this very hard work. So not only the, the big professor, but all the young guys that have, are doing a very, very good work. This is my own opinion. I think uh, it m must be shared by everyone here, OK? This is one point. The other point is that I will uh, take your attention for, uh, let's say, I wouldn't say this is the focus of the conference. But uh, I think that most of you know that there is not just one metastable iron carbide. There are several iron carbides uh, which are interesting in steel metallurgy. And I think uh, one of the simplest techniques uh, to obtain them, it is the old story. Now it is rather old, yes, of ball milling. So ball milling, uh, you can call it mechanical alloying. You can call it uh, mechanochemical synthesis. It has been uh, known uh, since years. Basically, the American guys, they went on by the work of Benjamin. And you know, all the oxide dispersion strengthening. Yesterday, we had been hearing about uh, oxide dispersion strengthening. But uh, basically, the Russian school, uh, it was a little bit more uh, on, uh, especially the civilian branch of the Academia of Science, with Bolireyev, Butyagin, and mm, many other guys, I would say, Yelsukov in the recent year. They were more on, say, this uh, special branch of science. So I think that uh, I am not uh, on one side or the other. Actually, I'm a professor of steel making, but I am interested in this technique since uh, some 20 years. Uh, so uh, there is a, a lot of experimentation and even uh, recent more work. I think there is one paper on uh, Acta Metallurgica and Materialia I think a few months ago, not by myself, but a German group. So I think the broad topic uh, uh, would be worth. Why? To be studied again. Because one point is that uh, we know most of the things about uh, iron carbide, which is cementite. I think that we should improve our knowledge about other carbides. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, epsilon carbide that you know has an important role. Uh, when you are considering martensite uh, and you are considering thermal cycle. I would say that also Heg carbide, which is F5C2, uh, uh, it is another important carbide. So uh, this is just a suggestion because, of course, we've been uh, hearing uh, Professor Paxton just, I think, yesterday or two days ago, and he was speaking about uh, uh, density, density functional theory, which, is, uh, which I am not at all an expert. Please do not ask me any question about that. But uh, there are also recent results by the group of the Smith and Chiquini. I think you know so about different carbides. So I think that having some practical information by a very, very simple technique. You know that ball millings, if you have patience, you can even do it by your hands. You get some device, possibly made at least by steel. Some steel balls, you can even go building steel balls. And then you put some elemental powders inside. And then you go on milling, possibly not with your hands, but maybe with a, a small laboratory device, maybe a Spex mill, which is very popular. Even the Fritz uh, pulverizette mill is very popular. You can build your own uh, device like I did some time ago. I think I will build another device soon with my students. So let us uh, go on, on uh, with the story. So basically, you can, is that right? OK. This was what I telling you. 
about. And I will present here basically, so mechanochemical synthesis. If you want to call it ball milling, okay, no problems. But the point is that between uh, the alloy and a compound like herbide, there is a, a something which is uh, not black, not white. And so you, you should consider the whole story. So as for characterization, I've been using here most bauer spectroscopy. Normally, I don't say the most bauer spectroscopy. That should be correctly do because, uh, but I will just say most bauer. You won't bother about that. So I will propose a kinetic approach to mechanochemical synthesis. So very, very simple ideas. Because when you go to compare experimental results, it is nice to compare one device with the other. So basically to see which is uh, your own action, you know, with the million time, which is a way of imparting energy to your elemental powders. You are not restricted to elemental powders. You can uh, nearly boil meal anything. Uh, if you want boil meal, I don't know, salt and pepper, you can do it. But it, maybe this is more interesting for, uh, for uh, our topics here. And so uh, I think that, uh, well, there is a wealth of uh, results on boil milling of uh, iron uh, carbon alloys. The whole uh, work was started by uh, Paolo Matteazzi and Gerard Lecaer. Uh, I think it was nearly 20 years ago. And uh, I've been working with them. By the time I was a PhD student. And uh, so we did together some work. Uh, I think that Gerard Lecaer is very good at most power spectroscopy. I am just an applied guy. So I can interpret, use it some, and make some experimentation. Paolo did some work about uh, uh, mechanochemical synthesis and synthesis of nano uh, crystalline material. I think it is still involved in some uh, industrial spin offs and so on of using nano phase powder by this technique. I am more on the university side. So, uh, what it is rather new for this presentation, you, you know that you have very uh, small carbon content and you can uh, obtain very useful alloys which are known as steels. So uh, what I have the pleasure to present you here, it is some discussion about very, very high carbon content uh, materials. And I'm trying to understand what's getting out from them. From my opinion, impression, what I wrote and what I <laughs> was looking in the literature, I think these uh, results are quite interesting and in a way worth to be studied. On the other side, I would point out that there is uh, I would say for this specific field, there is a tradition that starts from uh, Senator uh, Lecaire Dubois, which is the French school of Mosbauer spectroscopy. They have been obtaining a lot of results, and anyone in the fields considering hyperfine field distribution uh, related to those resources. So this is Mosbauer. But the point is that you can characterize uh, uh, your powders, because you obtain powders by means of X-ray diffraction and I think most of you is much more expert than I am in transmission electron microscopy. So the game, as for me, it is, and the adventure, by the way, Professor Badesha, is one. First of all, how about studying different carbide stability, like it has been done recently by the group working uh, on the fischer trop uh, synthesis? You know that carbides, they play an important role for steels, but they, important, they have an important role as well in a special uh, uh, chemical technology, which is obtaining oil from gas. And this is practically industrial done by Saisal, which is a, a very big uh, South African group. So I think there is a lot of interest in this technology, even because it's not just carbon that you can uh, put into oil, but some, you know, this, uh, some so-called green material that you can also carbonize and put into oil. So this is a topic rather hot for, for these kind of guys. But, so they've done uh, very nice and recent work. I think that uh, uh, something more could be done by, let's say, the steel community. So uh, let us go on. So this is uh, uh, a anything I was mentioning to you. So you get some balls, you get a jar, and you shake it basically around 20 years. You, it can be as small as a, as a glass. It can be uh, bigger. 
you can produce uh, powders in the range from some grams. Typically, a spex millet is producing three or six grams, so you can make some experiments on that. You can produce kilograms without, with a scaling up. It is rather difficult to produce more than a lot of kilograms for, with a device, but one never knows about that. So this is quite well known. So I am putting inside uh, elemental powders, iron and graphite, and I am obtaining uh, some carbides. Uh, so this is uh, a scale up, so this is a little bit bigger. If you want to, uh, these are maybe, it is not just ball, one ball, normally there are some 20 balls inside that. So you can just vibrate it, again around 20 hertz. You have the, the speed of the balls around uh, some meters. Of course, if you are increasing your uh, uh, or, or changing your amplitude, you will obtain uh, basically different results. But uh, normally, as uh, the spex mill is a sort of paradigm for the small laboratory experiments, this has been done scaling up uh, uh, the things like the velocity in that range. So from two up to five uh, meters on a second, which is enough to, to make, uh, yes, another slide. So we did also some other things. Uh, the, the big issue, which I have not solved yet, it is to have a, a control of the temperature inside the vial. So this was the idea to the, making a prototype vial, vial, so to make some internal conformal channels so that you can control the temperature inside. I don't think this was really successful. So, so the topic is that uh, uh, when you have this reaction locally, then you can monitor, you will have a look. This is obtained by the experimental meal, but anything else could be uh, good. So please just uh, consider this BPR. What does it mean? Ball to powder ratio. So it is important to consider the weight of your uh, balls and the weight of the material you are uh, acting on, because basically it substituted, in, in a way, the time of milling. So if you are ju just going with this ball to powder ratio around 18 like that, and you go 10 hours milling, then it would be that if you are using BPR even higher, then you can mill for shorter periods. So uh, this is uh, just a spectrum from Mosbauer spectroscopy. I hope that uh, most of you won't be offended by what you can extract from that. Uh, it is uh, quite easy to extract uh, and hyperfine field uh, distribution. So from the, the previous data, you can extract any hyperfine field distribution and about the model, which, is, which was done basically by, Le, by Lecaire around uh, more than 25 years ago. And that is working for any kind of iron carbide, both in the, the field of catalysis and both in the fields of any kind of useful for, for uh, the steel uh, science, and science and business activities. So you can extract this superfine field distribution. And well, uh, you got to, to have some ideas about. So what's going on? So you will assign, uh, we will not even speak about uh, Isomer shift, quadrupole splitting, but let's say that everything is easy, and please do not be offended if I'm just simplifying the thing like that. So, like that, you assign, because there, there has been a lot of work before, you assign your hyperfine field, and from the hyperfine field, you can extract the relative area, and on the relative area, you can count your iron atom and extract then which is the percentage of what you obtained. This is just a technique. It is not the only. You can use uh, X-ray diffraction. You can use as many analytical techniques that you want. I think the, 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 the real tough game, for instance, I have, and I will show you afterwards, I have still many diffraction data, which uh, with much mo modern uh, technique, like uh, the Ritwell technique and many algorithms your group is using, actually, you can extract information Actually, the whole thing is a little bit uh, disordered because you have uh, a lot of plastic deformation, so you will have a lot of defects, and you have the formation of uh, 
of uh, carbide. So these are another from, seen from another point of view, uh, the assignment of, uh, of the hyperfine field distribution. So one, once again, you can put that one. Do you understand what I am saying? Maybe not. So I will say it once again. So you, I can extract the hyperfine field distribution from uh, uh, your spectra and then assign to different car carbides. Uh, in this case, you will see for sure, you will see some iron here, which I think rather wrong because it, it is 330, so it should, should be put here. So you can have some carbon, but uh, uh, I am calling it Martin City component. I must be very careful because I don't want to speak uh, a lot about that. Please consider that normally I have a lot of carbon around. So I'm not considering small amounts of carbon, like because I am working for this work with very, very high carbon uh, concentration. So I am more focusing on carbon-rich compounds like uh, cementite, like Hag carbide, like uh, epsilon carbide, who is uh, here, I think uh, you have much more uh, iron carbides that I have uh, enumerated here because you can have different forms of, of uh, uh, epsilon carbide, for instance. This depends on structure. And then additionally, which is my current question, you can have uh, uh, other higher carbon compounds, which is what I'm going to, to try to extract, but uh, I'm not uh, that sure. So about uh, the iron curvation ratio. So this, uh, this is the initial composition of the cementite. So 75 atoms of iron and 25 atoms of carbon. And this has been done extensively in very, very different way. So this is, in a way, how it is going. The initial 100% uh, non-converted atoms of iron going now with the time evolution. So you see here the million time. So you see this is a traditional, <laughs> say for, for the technique, uh, 10 to 1 volt to powder ratio for uh, 3 grams. And you can see the different evolution. So uh, you have a loss Professor. of, yes, thank you so much, because I've lost my watch. Yeah. So I must be. <laughs> Thank you for So you can see the different evolution starting from different compositions. I wouldn't say we could say a final word about that because as far so if I am speaking about talking about steel, saying it about I started from ninety five percent atoms of carbon, it is very, very uh, unbelievable. But still the atoms are reacting in a different way. I would say, and forming different carbide. For the, for the moment, I've identified basically the same carbide that you saw here. So once that you have to obtain those results, like that, you, you can have uh, all uh, the, this is uh, what is uh, the new presentation of these results. So, so you can have some uh, carbides. I don't find any other different carbide from my hyperfine field distribution, but this must be discussed and investigated as well. This is very, very uh, fine tool because if you use X-ray diffraction, I don't know if I will present them here for, for because I will not have the time, but uh, you will just see a very big uh, broadening about carbon. So you go see carbon, carbon, and it's very difficult to extract information from that. So. Uh, this is another uh, comparison. So these are quite standard results. So you can obtain then other uh, groups later on. They have obtained similar results. And it is quite safe uh, to consider that. What it is not so uh, well known uh, and maybe not well presented here, it is the thermal stability of those carbides. I think this is very interesting because once that you understand you have different carbides, Understanding which is the stability, it is important. Of course, these are very plain iron carbon carbides. It, they're not those ca complex carbides you may have in steels, but still it is interesting. And I think this is uh, basically, you know, just one hour 
uh, one hour annealing, and then a specific material. You can see that the hyperfine field distribution is changing. So these are the most bigger. And so here you see uh, the different influence of uh, different uh, temperatures. I think this would be very interesting to study and to uh, exp explore in different situations and positions, even because we know something about cementite and the thermodynamic properties of cementite. There is very nice work by German people. But I don't think we had a lot of work about the thermodynamic properties of other carbides, which may be useful not only for this field, but because if you know, want to use uh, uh, the CALFAD approach, you need to have some data about even at a stable uh, phase. So about my conclusion, mechanochemical synthesis. It is a very simple and elementary technique for synthesizing iron carbides. I think it is worth to be considered by the community of uh, physical metallurgy of steels. And I think that uh, uh, this topic is uh, perspectively interesting for people in uh, the world of, uh, uh, let's say, density functional simulations. And I think also that this would provide uh, some additional data that uh, could be useful, even maybe not key, but for the whole uh, uh, physical metallurgy of steel community. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thanks, Professor Miyagi. Uh, so we're open for questions. Uh, Harry? So actually, I think the uh, first principles people have already published uh, the thermodynamic properties mm -hmm. of uh, many of these mm -hmm. uh, carbides. Uh, mm -hmm. as they should be in the literature. Yes, uh, I sent to uh, your group some, some uh, this, this myth uh, and Cinquini group. It is very excellent work. With from free first principle. It is not the only one. I think uh, Professor Paxson will know a lot more, but this is one. You know, in the past, we've been, been uh, relying a lot on the minima approach and for some experimental uh, estimation, a uh, good semi empirical estimation of uh, the enthalpies of formation. Now we have this uh, more fantastic game about uh, density functional uh, theory. And I think that, uh, you know, having both data, I mean, uh, experiments, of course, these are disorder systems, but making some, and I think it would be in, in, interesting and, and also, in a way, exciting. The other topic is that maybe is for uh, younger guys that I am. So you have all this uh, retail approach, and I have a lot of data, and I can provide you, even now, if you want, uh, the old uh, diffraction data so we can put together and to study together the, the phase evolution. So there is a lot of experimental work done by myself over the year. So it is just to put all the things together. Because when you are using very short milling time, let's say 15 minutes, 30 minutes, in the iron carbon system at, at the initial composition of cementite, you already have some alloy uh, formation. So you have all the games that you are playing usually. So you have uh, the formation of, of a high carbon alloy. Then you can have uh, some, uh, some tetragonality and so on. But the point is that to put together the X-ray diffraction precise, in a precise way and also the most power data in a precise way. This, I think, a, a game should be uh, very nice to be played again. Uh, but first, uh, Any other questions? For, okay. Thank you for, for your presentation. But uh, as you had the time uh, during your report uh, for presentation X-ray data. Maybe now you can say several words about uh, this result and compare uh, X-ray results yes, and uh, power results. I think the, the whole uh, game, it is to be played. I mean, I have some ideas, but the, the good thing would be, can I do it? Uh, or can uh, so? I just put them here, but. Uh, Oh, so I can, I can, I have a lot of X-ray diffraction data. I want to be more precise because uh, all the work that I've been doing over the, the last year, it was just considering, uh, of course, uh, uh, X-ray line broadening. Of course, all these carbides are nano. And you can uh, extract uh, uh, the information from that. You can uh, use uh, very simple approaches. But now that we have more sophisticated software, I think the, the one game should be you have most power, phase analysis, you have basically the Le Caire, 
uh, assignment of uh, hyperfine field distribution and then go again and go, go more analytical because if you have four or five phases it's with disorder, well, it's a tough game. But if we have data and I have data, we can play the game together because it's already, I have sent already to the, to the guys, but maybe I sent them an email at two o'clock in the afternoon. So they, they have not got it yet, but they are on the end. They will be available on the website. Uh, it's uh, some MATLAB programming and you have already the data and you already have all, uh, I think there are at least 15 uh, uh, different uh, uh, time composition, uh, uh, the X-ray refresh. So they are open and I will make available also the most bauer, most bauer data and hyperfine field distribution as well. So we got to connect them one another. And this is a rather an invention in my mind. Hyperfine distribution is a very important thing, but X-ray data information about crystallography and crystal structure, it's a more in, important information pro about phase. Not only, not only magnetic hyperfine fields. Well, you know, uh, I think that uh, in the work that I've been uh, done over the years, this, this so was, you know, normally if I uh, had this picket even on the X-ray data, I wouldn't have had uh, 20 minutes for my presentation, okay? And in any case, uh, I am interested because I want to check whether uh, some other metastable carbides are formed or not. So, so for this high carbon system, I want to be uh, deeper inside the investigation. Of course, I've already X-ray data, but I want to, to. On the other, with less carbon system, I can tell you X-ray work has been done so, so many times that it is not a problem, okay? And it, which confirms perfectly the hyperfine field distribution, okay? But the point is that I want to go more quantitative than I was in the past. This is the point. Okay, so your, your, uh, your uh, observation is welcome. I think we have a question online. Uh, yes. Um, were any different, for example, hyperfine field distribution, not between uh, mechanical chemical synthesized carbide and those precipitate in steel? Well, uh, no, uh, in my mind, these, those systems, if you are considered just the as milled powder, they are much more disordered as comparing to steels. So if you are going up with the temperature, now you can have, uh, let's say, more, more uh, standard and uh, less uh, uh, extended uh, hyperfine field distribution. But uh, this might be compared uh, with some steels, but I think that the game is properly interesting for, for this part of, uh, I think that for steels there are also other more like metallography and so on, so much more important techniques, okay? Uh, is there any other questions? Okay. How, how do you find for martensite during ball milling? Is there any temperature rise? Well, uh, you find the Martin site because you can have from uh, X-ray data, you, you have uh, an A axis and then you have a C axis and you can even, it is not my work, but it is uh, the work of German people, you can even extract uh, the percent by the, the, the normal uh, Roberts or, or the like uh, uh, position about uh, the uh, A on C ratio that you can extract uh, the carbon composition. So I did, and independently, quite a lot of other people has done, and recently this uh, Acta Metallurgica and Materialia work. But the ball milling is done at room temperature, right? Yeah. When the powder is ferrite. Yes, basically it's a poor iron with some, this is commercial powder, so it will have some uh, impurity, uh, like you can use even better powders because uh, but this is just uh, uh, water atomized and then reduced powder, the one that you are using currently for sintering application. So yes, you find martensite. But the focus here is not on martensite because you have this, uh, but we, we, can, we can discuss this topic and I suggest that uh, if you want, I can give the, the link and we can consider and read together this recent paper that has been published now. Thank you. All right, do we have any more questions? Uh, if not, let's thank again to Professor Mirai. Thank you.